are the new and dynamic sources of economic growth? You know, traditionally, economists used to classify the sources of growth from the demand perspective. Internal demand, external demand and import substitution. It was a very good exercise, originally done by a famous economist, Paulus Chenery. And uh, this type of exercise gives us some idea about the extent to which internal demand or external demand or import substitution contributed to growth in a given sector. Take the example of food processing. You say during a particular period, to a 20 year period, in terms of percentage, 80% of the growth stemmed from external demand, then 20% stemmed from uh, internal demand, and uh, import substitution did not contribute anything. It's quite possible. If you look at this type of uh, decomposition exercise across countries, you will realize that in export-oriented countries, particularly in newly industrializing countries of Asia, Republic of Korea, Taiwan province of China, uh, Indonesia, uh, Thailand, Malaysia, in all these countries, external demand accounted for major share of an increase in output, increase in value added during a given period, accounting for nearly 90%. So 90% of growth in manufacturing in all these countries stemmed from external demand. Unfortunately, that high degree of export orientation was funded by high intensity of imports. Without imports, they could not export. And the import intensity was funded by short-term lenders. So the day the short-term lenders withdrew, everything collapsed. That's why the East Asian financial crisis surfaced. Now, economists are talking about new and dynamic sources of growth. I would classify them into three L's and three C's. Three L's are linking, liberating and learning. Three C's are connect, comply and compete. I will explain it now. Linking means you first establish a link with dynamic sources of growth which are normally across the border. So through foreign direct investment by networking with the transnational corporation by networking with the major players who already reached the threshold of competitiveness in any product development, who have reached the frontiers of best practice, you reduce the distance to frontiers of best practice and replicate the best practice through establishing link, link. And then you have some resources, you have the capabilities, you have the skills, you have the knowledge and use those uh, capabilities and knowledge to liberate with the dynamic sources of growth. And in the process of liberating, you learn and then learn to invent something new. This is called linking, liberating and learning. And other uh, new sources of growth are almost similar, which is some difference. Connect, comply and compete. Connect means first you connect yourself with the global market, whatever you do, and then Comply with international standards and quality control norms to turn out products with a high degree of precision so that they are internationally tradable in whatever you do. And then you compete. If you do this, first you establish your connection and comply with the international standard and then you are able to compete successfully in the global market. These are all the new and dynamic sources of growth. And now, uh, what is happening now, in the past, uh, the textbooks of economics used to tell uh, the students that uh, land, labor, capital, organization are the factors of production. But today, the new factors of production are information, knowledge, technology, and uh, uh, then uh, skills, research, innovation, and networking. Again, I would add these ingredients also as new and dynamic sources of growth.